the 20th of July, 1944. Just a few hours after German military officers attempt to assassinate Adolf Hitler at the Wolfslayer, his East Prussian headquarters at Rastenburg, the Führer keeps his appointments including a meeting with Italy's fascist leader, Benito Mussolini. The plot was the culmination of efforts by several groups in the German resistance, which hoped that Hitler's violent death would signal an anti-Nazi revolt and overthrow the Nazi German government. In the days that follow, Adolf Hitler orders a massive hunt for conspirators, and their executions will continue to the last days of the war. A leading conspirator in the 20 July plot, who was designated to become commander-in-chief of the German armed forces, is a Nazi field marshal, Erwin von Witzleben. Erwin von Witzleben, the son of a captain in the Prussian army, was born on the 4th of December, 1881, in Breslau, then part of the German Empire. Erwin, as with his father Georg, became a soldier. He completed the Prussian Cadet Corps program, and in 1910, he was promoted to first lieutenant. Three years earlier, in 1907, Witzleben married Elsa Klerberg, and their marriage produced a son and a daughter. At the beginning of the First World War, which began on the 28th of July 1914, Witzleben served as a brigade adjutant in the 19th Reserve Infantry Brigade before being promoted to Hauptmann and company chief in the Reserve Infantry Regiment No. 6 in October 1914. Later, in the same regiment, he became battalion commander. Among other places, his unit fought in Verdun and Flanders. Witzleben was seriously wounded and was awarded the Iron Cross, both first and second classes. In 1918, he was sent to general staff training and witnessed the war end as a first general staff officer of the 121st Infantry Division. The First World War ended on the 11th of November 1918 when the German leader signed the armistice in the Compiègne Forest in France. The introduction of new weapons like the machine gun and gas warfare led to enormous losses and the war claimed the lives of 10 million soldiers. Property and industry losses were catastrophic. As a result, the victorious powers imposed a series of treaties upon the defeated powers. Among the treaties, the 1919 Treaty of Versailles held Germany responsible for starting the war and liable for massive material damages. The treaty imposed harsh penalties on the Germans, including the loss of 13% of its pre-war territories, extensive reparation payments, and the demilitarization of the Rhineland. In the new Weimar Republic, which was the name given to the German government from 1918 to 1933, Erwin von Witzleben was chosen as one of only 4,000 officers to serve in the Reichswehr, the German army, which the Treaty of Versailles had limited to 100,000 men. Witzleben was promoted to company commander, and in 1923, he found himself on the 4th Division staff in Dresden as a major. In 1928, he became battalion commander in Infantry Regiment No. 6 and retained that position as Lieutenant Colonel the following year. After being promoted to full colonel in 1931, he took over as commanding officer of the Prussian Infantry Regiment No. 8 in Frankfurt on the Oder. Before Adolf Hitler and his Nazi party came into power, in 1933, the often conservative leadership of the German military initially saw Hitler as a radical and political upstart. They did not support his attempted at coup, the 1923 Beerhold Putsch. Instead, they fired on Hitler and his fellow insurrectionists rather than joining him. However, the SA, or the stormtroopers, under the control of Ernst Röhm, posed a threat to the army. Once the Nazis came into power, Röhm wanted the SA to replace the professional military as a people's army. Consequently, in 1934, military leaders agreed to support Hitler's undermining of the SA's power and the elimination of much of its leadership in exchange for a guarantee of their status as the sole national military organization. On the 30th of June 1934, when the SS murdered Röhm and many of the SA's top officials, the military did not intervene. The Nazis also murdered other old enemies with whom the regime had a score to settle, such as General Kurt von Schleicher, who had preceded Hitler as Chancellor and had criticized his cabinet. In his speech to the Reichstag, the German parliament, on the 13th of July justifying his actions, Hitler denounced Schleicher for conspiring with Röhm to overthrow the government and alleged that both Schleicher and Röhm were traitors working in the pay of France. This purge became known as the Night of the Long Knives. Witzleben, however, 
indicated opposition against the Nazi regime when he demanded an inquiry into Schleicher and Ferdinand von Bredau's deaths in the Night of the Long Knives. Von Bredau was the deputy defense minister in Kurt von Schleicher's short-lived cabinet. As a result of that and his criticism of Hitler's persecution of Werner von Fritsch in the Blomberg Fritsch affair, during which Hitler got rid of two high-ranking military officials, Werner von Blomberg and Werner von Fritsch, who were regarded as too hesitant with the war preparations that Hitler demanded, Witzleben was temporarily forced into early retirement. His retirement did not last, however, as Hitler soon needed him in the preparations for the Second World War. In 1938, Witzleben, then a general of the infantry, was a member of the Oster Conspiracy, a group of plotters including Colonel General Ludwig Beck, Generals Erich Hoppner, and Karl Heinrich von Stilpnagel, Admiral and Chief of the Abwehr Wilhelm Canaris, and Abwehr Lieutenant Colonel Hans Oster. The Abwehr was the German Armed Forces Intelligence Service from 1920 to 1945. The men planned to overthrow Hitler in a military coup d'etat and avert another European war, which seemed highly likely during the 1935 Sudeten crisis, until the Munich Agreement both shocked and demoralized the plotters. Hitler's success at the Munich Agreement meant that the basis for the planned coup d'etat was removed. In November 1938, Witzleben had been installed as Commander-in-Chief of the Army Group II in Frankfurt. He was also involved in General Oberst Kurt von Hammerstein Eckhardt's conspiracy plans of 1939. The latter attempted repeatedly to lure Hitler into visiting a fortified base under his command along the Siegfried Line, which was a German defensive line built during the 1930s. He confided to Colonel General Ludwig Beck, a retired army chief of staff and leading conspirator, that a fatal accident will occur when the Führer visited his base. However, Hitler never accepted Hammerstein's invitation. On the 26th of August, 1939, Erwin von Witzleben took command of the First Army. Its primary mission was to take defensive positions and guard the Western defenses of Germany against Allied forces along the Maginot Line during the attack on Poland, which began six days later, on the 1st of September, 1939. The Maginot Line was a line of concrete fortifications, obstacles and weapon installations built by France in the 1930s to protect its border with Germany. When Germany attacked France on the 10th of May 1940, the First Army was part of Army Group C. On the 14th of June, it broke through the Maginot Line and within three days had forced several French divisions to surrender. For this, Witzleben was decorated with a Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross. In the great wave of promotions that followed the fall of France in June 1940, Witzleben was promoted to Field Marshal in July of the same year. In 1941, he was even appointed Commander-in-Chief in the West, succeeding General Field Marshal Gerd von Rundstedt, but only a year later he took leave from that position for health reasons. However, some sources claim that he was again forcibly retired at this time, after he had criticized the regime for its invasion of the Soviet Union on the 22nd of June, 1941, in Operation Barbarossa. In 1944, the conspirators around Colonel Klaus von Stauffenberg saw Witzleben as the key man in their plans to overthrow the Nazi German government, and von Witzleben was to take over supreme command of the entire Wehrmacht as the highest-ranking German soldier after Hitler's death. From early 1942, Stauffenberg had come to share two basic convictions with many military officers, that Germany was being led to disaster and that Hitler's removal from power was absolutely necessary. After the Battle of Stalingrad, which ended on the 2nd of February 1943, with a capitulation and near total loss of the 6th Army, which was regarded as the best field army in the Wehrmacht, Stauffenberg, despite his religious scruples, concluded that the Führer's assassination was a lesser moral evil than Hitler's remaining in power. On the 20th of July 1944, Stauffenberg placed one of the two bombs in a briefcase under the table in Hitler's briefing room in the Wolf's Lair. However, he was unable to arm the second bomb in time, and after Stauffenberg left the room, the briefcase was coincidentally moved under the heavy support of the table leg. It detonated, but failed to kill Hitler. This was not, however, immediately known to the conspirators. An ally at Hitler's headquarters cut off all communication as Stauffenberg returned to Berlin to coordinate the implementation of a plan codenamed Operation Valkyrie. At first, the plan seemed to go smoothly as the reserve army began to take action, but delays, confusion, and poor communication robbed the coup of its initiative. 
Eventually, the fact of Hitler's survival was broadcasted and the plot quickly unraveled. As a result of the failed coup, every member of the Wehrmacht, German armed forces, was required to re-swear his loyalty oath by name to Hitler, and on the 24th of July 1944, the military salute was replaced throughout the armed forces with the Hitler salute, in which the arm was outstretched and the salutation Heil Hitler was given. Major Otto Ernst Remmer, who played a major role in stopping the plot, was promoted to colonel and ended the war as a major general. In the days that followed, Hitler ordered a massive hunt for conspirators, which continued for months. Erwin von Witzleben was arrested on the 21st of July, 1944, one day after the failed assassination. He was dishonorably expelled from the Wehrmacht by the regular army's court of honor, a conclave of officers set up after the attempted assassination to remove officers from the Wehrmacht who had been involved in the plot, mainly so that they were no longer subject to German military law and could be arraigned to a show trial before the notorious People's Court. In August 1944, some of the arrested perpetrators of the failed assassination, including Erwin von Witzleben, were brought for punishment before the Nazi People's Court, presided by Roland Freisler, a fanatical Nazi judge. Hitler had ordered that those found guilty should be hanged like cattle. The proceedings were filmed in order to be shown to the German public in cinema newsreels and portray how Freisler ran his court, as he would often alternate between questioning the defendants in an analytical manner and then suddenly launching into a furious verbal tirade, even going so far as to shout insults at the accused from the bench. The shift from cold, clinical interrogation to fits of screaming rage was designed to psychologically disarm, torment, and humiliate those on trial, while discouraging any attempts on their part to either defend or justify their actions. Witzleben was in the first group of accused conspirators to be brought before the People's Court on the 7th and 8th of August, 1944. At the beginning of the trial, von Witzleben showed the Hitler salute, which Freisler forbade. As the accused was dishonorable in his eyes, and in his opinion, only honorable comrades were permitted to use this salute. At one point, Freisler yelled at Field Marshal Erwin von Witzleben, who was trying to hold up his trousers after having purposely been given old, oversized, and beltless clothing. He told von Witzleben, You dirty old man! Why do you keep fiddling with your trousers? On the 8th of August, 1944, von Witzleben was sentenced to death. However, he did not lose his dignity. The closing words he addressed to Freisler are said to have been, You can hand us over to the executioner. In three months, the outraged and tormented people will hold you accountable and drag you alive through the mud of the streets. Von Witzleben, then 62 years old, was put to death the same day the verdict was announced. However, instead of being executed by firing squad, as was customary for military personnel, by Hitler's direct orders, he was hanged in the Plötenzer prison in Berlin with a meat hook and a thin hemp rope, which the people who were not from the prison staff called a piano wire. In some cases, this barbaric method of execution caused the death struggle to last for 20 minutes. Though Witzleben's execution was filmed, the footage has since been lost. After the war, Albert Speer, Hitler's main architect and the Minister of Armaments and War Production in Nazi Germany, claimed that his Führer had watched the movie a few times in his headquarters. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Be sure to like and subscribe, and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss our next episodes. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.